Hi there. Today we're going to be looking at division of fractions. Um, this is quite a tricky topic, so we're going to break it down, do it one step at a time. We're going to start with some whole numbers and then we're going to build it up from there. So we're going to start nice and easy. Okay, our first question, question one, is 10 divided by 2. All happy with that? I've got 10. I divide it by 2 into two equal parts, and therefore my answer is 5. Now let's think if there's a different way we can look at this. I've got 10 and I've divided it into two equal parts. So often we will say with a question like that, I've halved it. I've halved 10 to get 5. Okay, so I could write half of 10 equals 5. How can I write that mathematically? Now we know from when we looked at multiplication that half of 10 can be written as half multiplied by 10. We also know that multiplication is commutative. That means that half multiplied by 10 is exactly the same as 10 multiplied by 1 half. So I can also write that as 10 multiplied 1 half. So let's compare what we've got again. We've got 10 divided by 2 equals 5. And we've got 10 multiplied by 1 half. Let's check and make sure that this equals 5 as well. So we would write this with 10 as an equivalent fraction with 1 as the denominator multiplied by 1 over 2 gives me 10 over 2, which gives me 5. Okay, so we know that these two calculations are the same. 10 multiplied by 1 half is the same as 10 divided by 2. Let me write that one other way. Okay, I'm just going to put it over here in a box. 10 multiplied by a half is the same as 10 divided by 2 over 1. So let's have a look. I'm just going to put it in a little bubble there. And let's see what we've noticed. That multiplying by 1 half is the same as dividing by 2. The way we would say that is dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of 2. Hmm. So what is the reciprocal of a number? Let's write that down. That's a key point. Okay. So what is the reciprocal of a number? So, the reciprocal of a number is 1 divided by the number. For example, the reciprocal of 3 is 1 third. Okay, so another key point, use your highlighter pens, put a box around it, however you want to um, highlight it. I'm going to use a highlighter pen. Okay, so the reciprocal of a number is um, 1 divided by the number. Okay, let's think about what that means for a fraction then. Okay, so let's write that down. What is the reciprocal of a fraction? What is the reciprocal of a fraction? Okay. Um, so the reciprocal of a Fraction. It's the same thing, actually. It's 1 divided by the fraction, but 
we tend to write that much more simply is the fraction and we say that it's been flipped upside down. So the numerator becomes the denominator and the denominator becomes the numerator. So for example, the reciprocal of two thirds is three over two. Okay, so the numerator becomes the denominator and the denominator becomes the numerator. So let's do some more calculations to make that clear again. Highlight the key points. I'm just going to highlight my example there that the reciprocal of two thirds is three over two. I'm gonna have to move my book so there's a little bit more space for you to see what I'm writing. Okay, hopefully you can still see that. Okay. Right, so let's do another example. Question two. I've got four over nine. I'm still at this point dividing it by a whole number, I'm going to divide it by two. Now I know that I can write that as four over nine divided by two over one. It's exactly the same. Let's look at what I wrote. Um, I know from my previous example that I can turn this into a multiplication and I've got another definition I need to write down. But we know that dividing by two is the same as halving. We've worked that out already. So I can say that four over nine is the same as multiplying by one half. I'm gonna get four multiplied by one is four. Nine multiplied by two is 18 and then I can simplify that down using equivalent fractions. I can divide the numerator and the denominator by two to give me two ninths. And some of you may have looked at cross cancelling here as well. Okay, let's have a look and see what that looks like. So I start with four ninths, okay? And I'm dividing by two. I'm halving my four ninths. So therefore, I have half as much as I had before. So I need to take half of it away. And I'm left with two ninths. So hopefully visually, you can see that. Let's try another example and see what it looks like. Let's say that I now have four ninths but I'm dividing by one half. I wonder what I do now. I'm dividing by one half. It was easy when I was dividing by two because I knew that was the same as halving it. Let's think again about this reciprocal. And as I say, we're going to get that definition down in a moment. I can write four ninths as the same as multiplying by two over one, that gives me eight over nine. I can't simplify it. I can show you visually, and then we're gonna write some sentences so that this makes sense. So this time, I started with four ninths, but I divided by two. Dividing by, sorry, I divided by one half. Dividing by one half is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So it's the same as multiplying by two over one. So I am therefore times in by two, I am doubling the amount of squares that are shaded and I end up with eight shaded cells out of nine in total. And remember with fractions, we always have to split into equal parts. 
So let's get some definitions down so that we know that this makes sense. We've got our definition for reciprocal, but our definition for dividing by fractions we need to write down now. So let's put a definition down. Definition. Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. Now, that is one of those key points that if you can memorize that, that is going to help you throughout your school life. Okay, dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. Now, some of you might have learned something called keep change flip or Kentucky chicken fried. Um, keep calm its fractions um, has also been used as well. Um, and lots of children are taught the division of fractions this way. I am going to say how it works. Um, but I'd really, really like you to focus on this definition here. And then you're much less likely to make a mistake because you've got the understanding that goes with it. So let's just look at, um, or oh, we can use the same example here. So we've got four ninths divided by one half. We write Kentucky chicken fried. K stands for keep. C stands for change and F stands for flip. So we keep the four ninths as it is. We change the division sign into a multiplication sign and we flip. Remember, the reciprocal of one half is two over one. We multiply it out, multiplying the numerators to get eight, multiplying the denominators to get nine. So that is... It's a nice little um, technique to memorise, but it's really important that you have this understanding that goes with it and understand why it works. Dividing by one half is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal, in this case, multiplying by two. Let's do a quick example using mixed numbers now. Oops. Okay, so question four, our mixed number example, I've got two and a half and I'm dividing it by three and one third. Now you'll remember from when we looked at multiplication, we learned how important it was to always, always, always convert mixed numbers into improper fractions. We're going to write that down again for division. Always, whoops, always convert mixed numbers into improper fractions. Okay, really important technique. So remember that. I'm going to put it in one of my bubbles. For division, always convert mixed numbers into improper fractions. So let's do that to start with, okay? Two multiplied by two is four plus one gives me five over two. Three multiplied by three is nine plus one gives me 10 divided by three, okay? Now I know that division of a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal, the reciprocal of 10 over 3 is 3 over 10. I have flipped my numerator and my denominator. Now I can then multiply this out. 5 multiplied by 3 is 15. 2 multiplied by 10 is 20. And then I can see if I can simplify it. I know that both of these numbers are in the 5 times table, so I can divide the numerator and the denominator by um, five to give me three quarters. Um, you may also have noticed, remember we have talked about cross cancelling, um, some students like it more than others, but if you wanted to use cross cancelling, let's write it out again. 
it just makes the math slightly more simple because I can say that 5 divided by 5 is 1, 10 divided by 5 is 2, and then I can multiply straight out. 1 times 3 gives me 3, 2 times 2 is 4. I've got the same answer using cross-cancelling. So that's an option if you're comfortable using it. Okay, right. I just want to do a couple of quick questions with a little bit of a flashback. So I'm just going to write flashback negative numbers. Okay. So we're just going to do a few quick, well, four quick examples here. Nice and simple to start us off. Okay, so A, I've got one half multiplied by one quarter. That gives me one eighth. Okay, let's have a look at one half multiplied by a negative quarter. I've got a positive multiplied by a negative. That's going to give me a negative one eighth. I've now got a Let's put B. For C, I've got a negative half multiplied by a positive quarter. Again, a negative multiplied by a positive gives me a negative one eighth. Finally, if I have a negative half multiplied by a negative quarter, that's going to give me a positive one eighth. Okay, just remember a negative multiplied by a negative will result in a positive. Exactly the same thing applies for division. So if I had one half divided by one quarter, that's the same as one half times by four over one, which is going to give me, can you read that just about two? For F, this time I've got a half, I'm dividing it by a negative quarter. It's the same as saying one half multiplied by a negative four over one, which is going to give me negative two. For G, you get the picture now. There's a lot of patterns in maths and they do really help. Um, if you're not sure on something, often if you write it down, the pattern will help you see what the solution is going to be. I've got a negative 2, just squashed on the end there. And finally, if I have a negative half divided by a negative quarter, that's going to leave me with negative a half multiplied by negative 1 quarter four over one, sorry I'm rushing, gives me a positive two, a positive two, because a negative multiplied by a negative gives us a positive, okay? So you can see why I did the multiplication first, because we're taking a division calculation and we're turning it into a multiplication. So that's your flashback for negative numbers. Finally, um, a quick flashback for order of operations. Again, I'm going to have to just move my book a little bit so you can see. Okay, so a quick question here. Right, the last question that we're going to be looking at. I've got two and a half. I'm adding four and one third and I'm dividing by three and one quarter. Now, if I'm remembering my order of operations, brackets, indices, division and multiplication are of equal importance. So I move from left to right. And then finally, addition and subtraction, also 
of each equal importance. So I work from left to right. So my division is more important than my addition. So I must do the division first. Okay, so I'm going to do my division first. And then once I've done that bit, I'm going to substitute it back into the original question and we can work out our answer. So I've got four and one third divided by three and one quarter. I'm going to turn them into improper fractions. So I have 13 divided by three, divided by three times four is 12 plus one, 13 over four. I know that dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. The reciprocal of 13 over four, I flip them over, is 4 over 13. I've now got a choice. I can either multiply my numerators and multiply my denominators, or I can do a bit of cross-cancelling. If I'm not comfortable with cross-cancelling, I'll just do 13 multiplied by 4 gives me 52, divided by 3 times 13 is 39, and I can simplify that down. I know they're both in the 13 times table, that takes me down to 4 over 3. If I did do the cross cancelling, you can see 13 divided by 13 is 1, and I'd go straight to 4 over 3. Okay, so I've got 4 over 3 as my answer. I'm not going to turn it back into a um, mixed number at the moment. Um, I'm going to go back to my original question now. Don't get to this point, think I've worked really hard and stop. Go back and check. Oh yeah, I've still got two and a half to add on. So now I'm going to do the addition. So I'm going to write the question out again. Two and a half plus four and one third divided by three and one quarter. I now know that equals two and a half plus we know that four and a third plus three and one quarter is four over three. Um, I'm now gonna convert this into an improper fraction, which is going to give me five over two plus four over three. Remember for addition of fractions, I must have a common denominator. In this case, I can multiply the two numbers together, which gives me six, so an equivalent fraction of five over two. I've multiplied by two by three to get six. So five multiplied by three is going to give me 15. I know that three multiplied by two gives me six. So four multiplied by two gives me eight. 15 plus eight is 23 divided by six. I can leave that as an improper fraction if I want. The question hasn't asked me whether or not to leave it as an improper fraction or convert it back. But just for completeness, I'm going to say that six goes into 23 three times with five remainder. So my final solution is three and five sixths. Um, I hope that's been useful. Thank you very much.